At number 10, Mariah Carey. We all know Mariah Carey as the skinny legend that she is, but lately people have been saying that her career is over. Though she's still out here making music and living her best life, there are some who say that her career is over and it all ended in 2016 during a live mishap that happened at her New Year's Rockin' Me performance. After building up to her huge performance at the end of the night, she finally took the stage and didn't sing a single note. When she got up to perform, the music started playing and she just stood there saying that she couldn't hear anything, probably in reference to nothing playing in her earpiece. As the music started playing for the audience, Mariah's dancers kept on going in the background and she shared her mic with the audience, getting them to sing for her, but nothing ever came out of her mouth. It was a letdown for a lot of people and it got a lot of fans wondering why she didn't sing even though there was music playing. For a while now, people have wondered if she's been lip syncing and there is some evidence to maybe back this up, but what do you guys think? Is Mariah faking it and is her career really over? At number nine, Carmen. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, engagement is every. Thing. For a lot of performers, they try to get out in front as many people as possible and attract more fans because doing so will help you grow faster, making you famous. One of the biggest assets you could have when growing your audience is having a successful guest appearance on a late night show like SNL because of how many viewers can tune in and watch you grow. This is how Lana Del Rey started, but this blessing can also be a curse and can end a few careers as well. Carmen was a music duo who got their start on YouTube by posting covers, though now it's been disbanded and rebranded, and there was a time when they almost reached fame after being musical guests on SNL, but after tanking their performance, they lost it all. They had a large following, and so when the casting director over on SNL found them and invited them to perform on the show, things started to look promising. They came on the show and performed their songs Broken Hearted and I Told You So, and after their performance, the reviews came pouring in, and they weren't very positive. They faced a lot of criticism saying that they failed to connect with the audience and one review even claimed that the duo's performance caused quote mild auditory distress. After this catastrophic performance, things weren't ever the same and their careers were pretty much over after that night. First up on our list today is Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is considered to be one of the most handsome Hollywood stars to grace the silver screen. He is also known for being an extremely talented actor who led a bit of a rough and tumble life. But what you may not know is that his ladies man attitude resulted in various affairs and marriages, and well, eight kids, with the actor adopting three additional kids on top of that. And sadly, some of these children would have extremely unhappy lives. In 1990, one of Marlon Brando's sons, Christian, shot his sister Sheehan's boyfriend. Apparently, he had suspected that Sheehan's boyfriend was harming her physically, and so Christian ended up taking his life when the altercation escalated. He was charged with manslaughter and served six years in prison. Sadly, that wasn't the only horror that the Brando children would go through, as only five years later, Sheehan tragically ended up taking her own life after a diagnosis with schizophrenia and a steady mental decline. Next on the list is Liv Tyler. We all know her as the stunning half-elf woman in Lord of the Rings. She's also known as the daughter of Steven Tyler, the eccentric frontman of Aerosmith. However, that wasn't always the case. Liv Tyler was originally born as Liv Rundgren, and she believed that the famous musician and music producer Todd Rundgren was her father. However, a chance encounter as an eight-year-old with Steven Tyler started to unravel Liv's true parentage. During the meeting, Steven pointed out the eerie similarities between his own daughter and Liv, which led to her mother finally confessing the secret. Liv wasn't related to Todd at all, and in fact, her mother had kept the secret to protect her daughter because Stephen was going through some serious substance issues at the time of their brief relationship. Liv eventually changed her last name to Tyler, but kept Rundgren as her middle name in homage to the man who raised her as his own at some point. Damn, I wish I had two rock star dads. Number 10, iCarly stunt double. If you wanna know something that proves the people at Nickelodeon only care about money, I've got a scandal for you that was almost swept under the rug entirely. In 2014, a stunt woman from iCarly claimed that the production ruined her career by recklessly dropping her from far too high above the ground, causing some really gruesome injuries. In a stunt gone wrong, Katina Waters was supposed to be dropped slowly down from the ceiling for an episode of iCarly 
in 2011. She was supposed to be slowly lowered to the ground while still attached to a wire. Instead, she claims that the person operating the descender machine dropped her without warning and she crashed to the floor. The medical consequences of the incident were pretty horrific. It caused severe injuries to her leg, including fractured bones and torn ligaments. But the long term effects on her health were even worse for her career. Waters was a highly successful stunt actor who performed in dozens of TV shows and movies, but of course, she missed out on a lot of work following the incident. Subsequently, she decided to sue the producer, Schneider's Bakery, plus Nickelodeon and MTV networks for pain, suffering, and loss of earnings. And she made the right decision as it later emerged that it wasn't the first time something like that had happened on the show. Number 9 The Gack After seeing countless celebrities being slammed on TV for years, there was an extremely high demand for Nickelodeon to release their iconic gooey green sludge to the public. This led the network to release what they called Gack into toy stores across the country in 1992, much to the delight of 90s kids everywhere. The product wasn't exactly slime that they had on the Nick shows, it was more like a squishy putty that made funny noises when you pressed it between your hands. Kids also loved the name Gak because not only was it onomatopoeia, but it also just sounded like how the product felt. However, the branding turned out to be a highly controversial decision, as the name itself was common street lingo for illicit street substances. In fact, it was literally a term for the substance that goes onto a spoon. The story goes that while someone on the Nick crew was working with the then nameless slime one day, they nicknamed it Gak, which became a naughty inside joke on set because of its meaning. Game show host Mark Summers was in on the joke too and eventually started saying it live on air, but Nickelodeon's marketing department allegedly had no idea and just cluelessly went along with it. Number 8 The Voice of Dora The network had a really big mess on their hands when Caitlin Sanchez, the teenager who starred on Dora the Explorer until she reached puberty, alleged that when she made the deal with Nickelodeon to voice the iconic character, she was given just 22 minutes to sign the contract without an experienced lawyer. The young star did so under duress, with the alleged promise that she'd receive residuals for her work, plus money from merchandising. This was in 2007, years before Dora the Explorer was established as an $11 billion global brand. So in 2010, Caitlin sued Nickelodeon and MTV networks for making her sign what she believed was a terrible contract that conned her out of millions, specifically citing unpaid work hours, as well as being paid only $40 for promotional appearances. The legal battle made headlines throughout the world thanks to statements made by Caitlin attorney that if Nickelodeon refuses to pay up by a certain date, he would expose their humiliating secrets. But the young voice actor ended up settling for $500,000, but then tried to resue because she and her family thought that the lawyer acted fraudulently and didn't tell her that most of the settlement would be eaten by taxes and lawyer fees. But to fans, the whole settlement just proved that the network certainly had something to hide. At number 8, Paula Deen. Paula Deen was once the wholesome southern mom who loved to cook, but after 2013, she took on a very different label after a lawsuit revealed her racist actions to the world. In 2013, Paula was facing legal action from one of her former employees who alleged that Paula was racist towards her and that she had repeatedly been harassed while working at one of her restaurants. After being deposed, the truth came out about Paula when asked if she had ever used the N-word and she said yes. After this came out, the floodgates opened and backlash ensued. As anyone would do, Paula went on the defense and even sat down for an interview on the Today Show, but instead of owning up to her actions and trying to play her name, as most people would try to do in that situation, Paula instead deflected the criticism she was facing and even voiced how she was surprised that so many people were taking offense towards her actions. It was thought that this interview was all for publicity, not for making a public apology, and after this, her career was pretty much done for because there was no coming back from this scandal, especially because she never apologized. At number 7, Charles Rocket. The 1980 1981 season of Saturday Night Live was a rocky and controversial one. This all started after executive producer Lorne Michaels took a step back from the show for a year and the position was filled by Gene Dumanian. Because of this position change, most of the cast left, prompting Gene to have to hire a new cast. This new cast was full of new faces and was untested, so at this point, the show was facing a lot of criticisms and bad reviews. Things went from bad to worse for everyone after comedian Charles Rocket dropped an F-bomb during a skit. 
SNL skits have been quite controversial in the past and they still face backlash from time to time, but swearing on live TV was really where the show drew the line, and breaking that cardinal rule could be detrimental to your career. During the season's 11th episode, Charles was closing out the show and decided to let an F-bomb fly while referencing a skit that he did earlier where he said, quote, this is the first time I've been shot in my life, I'd like to know who the F did it, end quote. People seem to believe that he swore on purpose because if you watch the footage back, there isn't any hesitation when he said it. But it could have just been that he didn't know that he couldn't say it, or he didn't realize that he had said it until later. Either way, this was the last straw for the studio and they fired much of the cast and crew, including Gene and Charles. This whole scandal came so close to sinking the entire show for good, but it did end up destroying Rocket's career after this. MMA legend Ronda Rousey. She's got a spectacular record and it's impossible to penetrate her amazing fighting legacy as she has cemented herself as one of the greats. Her personal life though, well, a little touchier. In fact, Rhonda has a history of aggression in her past relationships, having violently harmed an ex-boyfriend. She is also a conspiracy theorist who has some extremely harmful opinions. She shared on her Twitter that she believes that the horrifying Sandy Hook incident was actually a manufactured incident and that the people and children involved were actually actors. I can't think of anything more harmful and disgusting than promoting that the real life harm of was done to take away guns from Americans. Rhonda shared the video and described it as quote, extremely interesting and a must watch documentary. Eventually, after obvious backlash, Rhonda deleted the video and her manager attempted to scrub any trace of it from the internet, which obviously didn't happen because it is in fact the internet. Next up is Frank Sinatra. The smooth singing romantic who charmed his audiences into the hall of greats has a seriously dark secret personal life. In fact, every move Frank Sinatra made was meticulously tracked by the FBI for 40 years in pages and pages of files. Why, you may ask? Well, outside of being held in suspicion for dodging the draft because of a supposed ear infection, he is also thought to have strong mafia ties. He's been seen in cahoots with a revolving cast of characters connected to the criminal underworld, including Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana, with whom he was close friends. Apparently, the FBI was so closely tracking Sinatra because he had introduced Sam to John F. Kennedy's campaign for presidency in an attempt to deliver union votes. Dodging the draft and electing John F. Kennedy, Sinatra is a man after my own heart. Number seven, Chris Savino. Once it was exposed, the massive scandal that was a PR nightmare for Nickelodeon was akin to the network's own version of Harvey Weinstein. In 2017, Nick was forced to fire one of its most prominent showrunners, Chris Savino, over allegations made by at least a dozen women. Savino, who has been in the business since the early 90s, previously worked on such animated shows as Dexter's Laboratory and The Powerpuff Girls, and was the creator of Nick's second highest rated kid show at the time, Loud House, which centers on a boy's life while dealing with a house full of sisters. According to Cartoon Brew, as many as 12 women came forward to accuse Savino of predatory behavior, including unwanted advances and threats of blacklisting after the relationships with co-workers had ended. What's even more disturbing is that the site said that the reports date back at least a decade. One woman said that she didn't accept an offer to work at Nickelodeon simply because Savino worked there. She alleged that when they both worked for Disney, he sent her explicit text messages and photos and once offered her a job in exchange for inappropriate things. And Walker Farrell, the director of BoJack Horseman, also came forward with her own Savino horror story from the early 2000s, when both of them worked at Cartoon Network. Just goes to show you how cases involving power and inappropriate behavior infect almost every corner of Hollywood. At number six, Jenny Slate. Sometimes your career can make or break you. Doing your job really well can pay off later down the line, but if you mess up, there can be some consequences. The messing up part applies to comedian Jenny Slate because after an incident on SNL cost her her job, her career may have been set back a little. Though she's found a lot of success now, back in 2009 when she worked on SNL, she was pretty new to the industry and was looking for something to bring her career to new heights. When she was hired on SNL as a writer and performer, things were looking great for her, but all that excitement turned sour after her first on-air performance. In her first appearance as a member of cast on the show, she was performing one of the sketches that she wrote, and while on air, she accidentally switched up one of her lines, making it a little more adult and dropping an F-bomb. She quickly caught herself saying it, but it was too late. Unfortunately, you can't put the words back in once they've left your mouth. 
She tried to brush it off, pretending like no one else heard it, but unfortunately, people did hear it. This mistake stuck with her for the rest of the time that she worked there, and she ended up leaving the show after one season. She was fired at the end of the season, not necessarily because of the F-bomb incident, but because she quote, didn't do a good job and didn't click. Because she got fired from such a big time production, it took a little for her to get back on her feet, but she's been doing great since. A minor setback, but nothing major. At number 5, Ashley Simpson. This is one of the cringiest SNL moments and is sometimes referred to as the worst moment in SNL history. Though that's a bit of an extreme title, it was a doozy of a scandal and no one was quick to forget about it, especially Ashley. In 2004, Ashley Simpson was invited on SNL as their musical guest to perform a few songs to promote her newest album at the time, Autobiography. She planned to perform a few songs from said album, and things went off without a hitch as she got into her first song, Pieces of Me. Her performance went pretty well, and she got the audience hyped for another song, but that's when things started to go south. As the band set up for the next song, music started playing, but it wasn't what anyone was expecting to hear. A vocal track for Pieces of Me started playing again instead of the next song in her set, revealing that Ashley had been lip syncing that whole time. She froze on stage, clearly embarrassed, and then she started doing a little embarrassing dance before running off the stage as the show cut to commercial. She tried to brush it off later when they came back on the air, but the cringe was just too much for people to handle. Later on, we found out that Ashley was advised by her father to have the vocal track and just lip sync because she'd been suffering from some severe acid reflux that had been causing damage to her vocal cords, and he just wanted her to rest her voice a little. It was only good intentions that got her into that predicament, but people say that this was the moment that destroyed her career. Next up is the actor who portrayed Spider-Man in the original Spider-Man movies, you know, the ones with the PlayStation font. Well, Tobey Maguire has had an insane childhood that was largely hidden from the public when he became an A-lister. He came from a very financially strained family. His parents adopted several of his cousins after his aunt passed away suddenly, and the weight of now caring for all these kids left them destitute and broke. In a desperate attempt to provide for all these children, Toby's dad attempted to rob a bank. His attempt was unsuccessful, and his father had to spend some time in prison for his crime. Thankfully though, he was released after a few years because it was his first time offending, and the judge sympathized with his cause. Luckily for them, they made it out of the ordeal, and now Toby is an internationally recognized celebrity. Next on the list is Kevin Spacey, and not for what you might think, because really nothing can keep what he did a secret, and his attempts at hiding it are abysmal at best. But what you may not know is that there are more than a few skeletons in his closet, and he's got one secret that I actually didn't know. Kevin's left-leaning political views are very well known, so it may come as a surprise that his father was vehemently racist and believed that white people were a superior race. Kevin refuses to talk about his father, but his siblings have opened up a handful of times about their traumatic childhood, often describing their father as an evil monster. Apparently, their father would also continually his kids while they were growing up, and it got so bad that Kevin's brother Randy almost took the life of his father while the young boy was hiding in a closet, but he never opened the door. Although Kevin is a reprehensible human being, no boy deserves to grow up in such a horrifying environment. Number 6, Zoe 101. The show was a boarding school set dramedy that hit Nickelodeon in January of 2005. Starring as protagonist Zoe Brooks, Jamie Lynn Spears was reportedly brought on by its creator Dan Schneider, all because she looked a lot like her older sister and superstar Britney Spears. But little did fans know there was actually a scandal brewing behind the set, as its star was just 16 when she fell pregnant pregnant, which would have been a bombshell for the very PG show. In her memoir, Things I Should Have Said, Jamie Lynn Spears confessed that her team decided that her pop star sister should not be told about her pregnancy because it was too risky. Quote, the entire Spears team was already caught up in my sister's PR difficulties, and everyone around me just wanted to make this issue disappear. From there, her family and management pulled her out of school until they could figure out what to do next, and even took away her phone for fear that the news would get out. As a result, the actress said that even her father stopped talking to her. But once the news was released, Nickelodeon immediately released a statement saying, we respect Jamie Lynn's decision to take responsibility in a sensitive and personal situation. And after wrapping shooting for the fourth season of Zoe 101, the network cancelled the series altogether. Number 5, Jason Biggs. In the early seasons of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Nickelodeon, Jason Biggs could be heard voicing lead turtle Leonardo, but scandal quickly erupted at 
the network when it was revealed that his social media activity was offensive enough that there were many calls to Nickelodeon to protest his involvement with the show. So in 2014, after only two seasons, he was ultimately replaced by Seth Green on the popular series. And for a good reason. Jason's Twitter in the 2010s was a PR nightmare. In fact, there didn't seem to be any topic too controversial for him to joke about, like a bachelorette contestant who died, a plane crash, the Pope, women's basketball, and sexually explicit comments about the politician Paul Ryan's wife. But the jokes backfired big time when the official Ninja Turtles Twitter account gave a shout out to Jason's personal account and encouraged their followers to check it out. It's safe to say that the kid friendly and PG network is not pleased with the immense backlash that they started receiving from parenting groups and conservative bloggers, eventually leading them to release a statement apologizing, while Fox News host Megyn Kelly called the American Pie actor a disgusting pig and called for him to be fired. Ultimately, the network responded to the pressure and gave Jason the boot. Number four, Angelique Bates, the actress who was one of the original cast members on Nick's sketch comedy show All That, exposed the reality behind the cameras when she spoke to the Shade Room in 2016. Angelique explains some of the horrors she endured, such as physical, emotional, and mental mistreatment from her mother in front of producers who not only turned the other cheek, but strongly urged her to just accept the violence and remain silent. She said that she was only 12 years old when the nightmare began, and that the producers and cast members could hear her yelling, but nothing was done to help her. According to Angelique, Child Protective Services did eventually show up in 1996, but she said that the adults on set pressured her to stay silent. Possibly in an attempt to muddy the waters or save her own skin, Angelique's mother, Dee Bates, came forward in support of her daughter, although she tried to shift the blame onto the network. Whatever the case with her mother's questionable side of the story, the former child star also explained that she was pretty much released from her contract at age 15 and claimed that she was blackballed by the entertainment industry as a result. But to this day, Nickelodeon have never come forward with an official response to the accusations. Number three, Victorious. Canadian actor Avon Jogia had his breakthrough role playing Beck Oliver in Victorious. But after Jeanette McCurdy's bombshell allegations regarding Dan Schneider, fans really started to question whether or not he had the same experience. In a recent TikTok video, Avan admitted that he did not actually remember filming the series at all because he was blackout drunk almost every night. Quote, when you don't remember a single plot line to a single Victorious episode, but you do remember going out partying every night. When one fan added that the show seemed like a fever dream to her, Avan just said, me too, and I was there. And when another fan asked, so Beck was hungover all the time, he just said yes. This admission was significant because in Jeanette's new memoir, she talks about the creator pressuring her to drink while she was underage, allegedly saying, quote, the victorious kids get drunk all the time. The iCarly kids are so wholesome. We need to give you guys a little edge. Sometime later, she claims that Schneider got into trouble with Nickelodeon for inappropriate behavior with the young cast and was not allowed to be near the actors anymore, meaning that he had to direct them from a separate control room. So it's entirely possible that he was creeping on more than just one actor. Number two, Jeanette McCurdy. Curdy. The iCarly star recently released her new memoir, which has been described as both heartbreaking and hilarious. The blunt title, I'm Glad My Mom Died, shocked fans upon its release because it reveals what really went on behind the cameras, something that up until now, fans have only been able to really speculate about. Jeanette exposed her traumatic experiences on Nick and the disturbing truth about how she was mistreated by her mother, who pushed her to be a child star, noting that her own persona that she was known for throughout her youth and her young adult life was all all the front forced upon her by her mom, who in addition to everything else was extremely physically inappropriate with her. Jeanette also discusses the perils of young fame and reveals that she developed an eating disorder as a child and talks about why she ultimately quit acting altogether. She also goes into great detail of numerous instances where she felt exploited as an actor, both on and off set. Describing the creator as mean-spirited, controlling, and terrifying, the former Nick star recalled a time when she was filming an episode of iCarly that he insisted that she wear a bikini instead of a one-piece swimsuit, which she was much more comfortable with. Number one, Drake and Josh. This show was one of the most popular shows on Nickelodeon in the early 2000s. Starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck, the sitcom was one of the network's most successful projects from that time. So when the truth finally came out, fans were understandably left disillusioned and upset. Nobody knew that behind the scenes, Josh heavily struggled with addiction. Looking to feel better about himself, the actor explained in an interview that he lost a hundred and 27 pounds in an 
month time span while filming the show. But when that didn't bring him happiness, he admitted that he turned to alcohol and illicit substances for help. But that was nothing compared to the revelation that his co-star was caught grooming young fans. In July of 2021, Drake Bell pled guilty to attempted endangering of children and disseminating harmful materials to juveniles after a young woman came forward and accused him of predatory behavior. The 19 year old who chose to remain anonymous claimed that he began talking to her when she was 12. The actor managed to get away with two years on probation and 200 hours of community service. But at 36 years old, Drake Bell's reputation is now irreparably tarnished. At number four, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is the one moment a year that millions of people tune in to watch the same thing. People turn off the reality TV programs and reruns of Jeopardy to grab a snack and watch the year's biggest performance. Well, during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, viewers watched a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life changing to say the least. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when a move went wrong and Janet's breast ended up getting exposed. Following the incident, the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident in a $550,000 lawsuit citing indecent exposure for their cause. Janet Jackson was really put through the ringer for her part in the whole scandal. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year, and her songs were blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums that she released following the incident was met with negative reviews because of the scandal. If this were to happen now, I doubt she would have been met with such severe backlash. Do you? It was later discovered that this whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal into their performance at the last minute, and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed at the last minute, resulting in Janice's exposure. It was all just an accident that ended up destroying someone's career. At number three, Sinead O'Connor. SNL has been hit with controversies in the past, but I think one of the biggest ones I can think of is the one surrounding Sinead O'Connor, the Catholic Church, and SNL. On October 3rd, 1992, Sinead was invited on the show and was asked to perform a few few songs from her newest album at the time, and she agreed, but had one request. Instead of performing one of her original songs, she opted to sing a cover of Bob Marley's song, War. Though it was a bit of a bizarre request, they allowed it, and so Sinead got up on stage and performed a very dramatic rendition of the song, even switching up some of the lyrics to change the context and meaning. Her performance all led up to where Sinead really made a huge statement, where she tore up a photo of the Pope, saying, quote, fight the real enemy. Apparently, this whole performance was designed to be a stunt as a means to raise awareness about how the Catholic Church had allegedly been hurting people. Sinead recalled having known people who were hurt by members of the church and she wanted to fight back on their behalf. Well, instead of this helping people like she wanted it to, it instead killed her career. As for the days following this live stunt, the network received thousands of angry calls. Even some celebrities spoke out condemning Sinead for this. Her career never really recovered from this moment, but she still stands by her decision to pull the stunt anyway. At number two, Millie Vanilli. In the 90s, there was a huge music scandal that ended careers and ended in tragedy. The lip sync scandal that surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals, and it revealed that they were never really a real group and that everything was fake. This stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farian as he attempted to create the next biggest music stars. It worked in theory, but they fell from grace as quickly as they rose. He had a vision to be able to release amazing music, but he needed the perfect people to sell it, and that's where Morvan and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired to be the bright, shining faces of Millie Vanilli, and though it was a musical act, they never had to sing. In fact, they lip synced their entire career. Their act was a hit, and it worked for a while, even earning themselves a Grammy for their song, Girl You Know It's True, but like all good things, they can never last. Millie Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts, they were asked to tour and perform live, but things started to get difficult for them since this act never really sang, and playing pretend on stage just wasn't cutting it. Eventually, they were caught in the act, so to speak, as their track suddenly stopped working during a live performance, revealing that they were faking it all along. This took a big toll on Morbin and Politis, especially on their mental health, driving Politis to take his own life. And finally, number one, Natalia Kills. How mean is too mean? Well, for former X Factor New Zealand judge Natalia Kills, she was too mean. After casting some harsh judgment on an X Factor contestant, Natalia was dubbed a bully and saw her career go down the tubes as a result. On the show's second season, contestant Joe Irvin performed a rendition of Michael Bublé's Cry Me a River, and when he finished his performance, that is when all hell broke loose. Natalia criticized his performance harshly, saying that he was a copycat of her husband, saying that he made her feel disgusted and sick. 
She also said, quote, as an artist who respects creative integrity and intellectual property, I'm disgusted at how much you have copied from my husband. From the hair to the suit, do you not have any value or respect for originality? You are a laughing stock, it's cheesy, it's disgusting. I personally found it absolutely artistically atrocious, end quote. A lot of people were shocked at how harsh her criticisms were, and so many people were appalled by Natalia's behavior that a petition was made to have her and another judge who was also a little too harsh removed from the show. The petition worked, and they were both booted midway through the season. Following this incident, Natalia was shunned and even went as far as changing her name to deflect some of the scrutiny that she was facing. Her career was truly over after this moment. Next up is a K-pop idol whose secret is definitely out of the bag at this point. We all know just how strict and borderline harmful the K-pop industry is towards its stars, often restricting diets to near starvation in an attempt to get their already lean singers to lose weight, alongside 12 to 20 hours a day of dance practice. But one K-pop idol from the band Bang Bang has some dark underground secrets that only recently came to light. Seeing Gri was sentenced last year to three years in prison for the crime of running an underground nightclub that bet heavily on foreign casinos where gambling is illegal. He was also charged with providing women to business executives for, you know, services. Apparently, he's been doing this for years and we only recently found out during a Korean military bust. Now it seems like sadly his K-pop days are over as he spends the next three years behind bars. Next up is Hollywood actor Casey Affleck. I'm surprised we haven't done this one yet, honestly. Known for movies like Manchester by the Sea and Gone Baby Gone, Affleck is a critic's best friend. But he's not everyone's best friend. In fact, Casey has been accused by multiple women of committing horrifying acts against them. Some say that he snuck into their bedrooms, other that when they refused his advances, he sent them violent and aggressive texts. Other women have said that he ordered a crew member to expose himself to this one woman. All of these allegations were attempted to be taken to court to be filed as multi-million dollar lawsuits, but they were both settled for unknown amounts. Thanks to these settlements, we may never know if these accusations are true or not, but it seems really odd that not many people are talking about it these days. In fact, when asked about it, Casey brushes it off as hearsay and his dark past seems to be fading into secrecy once again. Second to first on our list is Oprah Winfrey. The talk show host who revolutionized the game, Oprah's name is synonymous with the monolithic empire she's built surrounding her image. She's known for her lovable, relatable, and welcoming personality. But her humble beginnings make her rise to fame all the more deserved. In fact, Oprah was born in Mississippi to a single teenager mom, and she grew up in extreme poverty. During her childhood, the cost of raising a baby became too much for the young mother, so she sent Oprah to go live with her father, or at least one of the men who she thinks might have been her father. During her time with her dad, Oprah's mom gave birth to two more babies, one of which was given up for adoption. The real kicker here is that Oprah only found out about her sister Patricia in 2010. While a gut reaction to this news may be to cast harsh judgment on Oprah's mother, it is important to remember that it is impossible to know what it is like unless you have been in her position. For those who have been, we think you understand the brevity of her decision. Last up is Nicolas Cage. Now, I guess it's not exactly a dark secret here, and I may be cheating a little bit, but I only just found this out when I was writing the script, and wow, wild. Anyways, Nicolas Cage is known for his fun and sometimes extremely cheesy acting in movies like Face Off and Ghost Rider. But what you may not know is that Nicolas Cage isn't even his real name. In fact, Cage's birth name is Nicholas Kim Coppola, and his uncle is the famed director Francis Ford Coppola. The name change resulted from his wish not to cash in on the fame associated with the Coppola name in Hollywood, though the actor did end up appearing in several of Francis' films. It is quite believable when thinking about it for a few seconds, as both talents are just as eccentric as the other. The principal difference is that Francis Ford Coppola's odd ideals gave the world masterpieces like The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, while Cage gifts audiences with wild overacting and melodrama. Oh, <laughs>